Yes, Damien, I'm on my way already. I reply as I hear my best friend sigh through the speaker. Well, Snowlight, I'll let you enjoy your trip. He finally says before hanging up the call. I raise the volume of the music. I can't believe I'm heading back to my city after four long years. I've achieved all my goals, except one thing, graduating. I failed my thesis, so I can't graduate until I complete it. And I think that's very complicated. For now, I'll take a summer vacation to rest a bit. Damien has been my best friend for as long as I can remember. Honestly, he is one of the closest people to me. They are the last holidays I have to spend time with Damien because he wants to study in Europe. He'll be far away again, but it's his dream to learn many things, so he's entitled to it. Damien is a very intelligent person. I gaze at the landscape through the window. It's getting dark. I arrive by the next day. It's a ten-hour journey. I should rest a bit during the trip. I take my soft and clean sheets, covering myself with them, to fend off from the cold and from the airplane's air conditioning. The sensation of the cool fabric against my skin makes me release a tired sigh. The worst part of traveling is the preparation. Packing properly, buying tickets, bringing my passport and making sure I have all my things ready for the trip. It sounds like very few things to do, but it's exhausting all the time. A feeling of relief runs through my body as I feel the tense muscles starting to release the accumulated tension of the day. I let myself be carried away by the comfort. I release a sigh of relief as I surrender to the comfort of the airplane seat. Usually, airplane seats are uncomfortable, but I haven't rested like this, so the sensation is more comfortable than I remembered. I can feel how little by little I allow myself to rest in that oasis of tranquility and comfort. I guess brace for impact. <laughs> the sound of the air, the plane landing wakes me up. I stand up as I grab my suitcase to exit the plane. I observe many people walking through the city and see many new faces, but I manage to spot many familiar ones. And I see Damien, who is distracted, taking photos of the sky. Our gazes meet, and it gives me a welcoming smile. Damien puts his camera in his bag. He walks towards me, and a happy Damien jumps on top of me. That, my dude! My dude! Did, you li we, like, this is the first time we met in ages! Why are you jumping me now? God, you have no idea how much I missed you. You haven't had breakfast, right? Yeah, I should take you to our place. Taco party? Yeah, taco party. I wonder what menu we'll get. Will it be spicy, traditional, or even spicier that leaves me crying like last time? He says jokingly. Damien has never been able to eat spicy food. But he has always been someone who likes to try new things. Sounds good, just like old times. It's all then, Snowlight. Yeah, let's go. We're running late for our favorite Mexican restaurant. We start walking. Damien and I exchange glances, the same route as always. As we advance, memories of the city came back to my mind. It's a bit nostalgic after so many years that the city remains the same as always. We venture into the area, filled with small local restaurants. We turn onto a specific street, arriving at the door of the Mexican restaurant, Taco Party. Damien and I looked at each other. Happiness was evident, a favorite place in the entire city. We enter the place. I head to a table at the back of the restaurant, and Damien stays at a counter to order the food. I see everyone sitting, smiling and chatting. Damien approaches the table and sits in front of me. Tell me, it's been three years since we last saw each other. Same with you. Do you have any pets now? Uh, I haven't, but I would like one. So, what kind of animals do you like then? Uh, cats, dogs, bunnies, bear. BEAR! BEAR! <laughs> I like bears, but they can be dangerous still. They are very cute. Yeah, I see. I... I haven't got any pets either. The waitress approaches, placing a large dish in the middle of the table. A uh, plate with baked tortilla chips, cheddar cheese, beans, and meat. It's big enough for two people. He clears his throat. Yeah, I was told it's today's special. They're called nachos. But, but dude, like, that, I, I'm pretty sure, like, nachos are universal thing at this point. I ordered them without chili because yeah, I didn't want to suffer. 
Uh, Damien takes a spoon and scoops them up. Bring it to his mouth for a bite. Also, yes, I see it, okay? I see it, a goddamn poster. Like, stop, stop commenting about it. God damn it. <laughs> oh my god. He's chews slowly, then nods in approval. Yep, these nachos are great. I try the nachos. They are crispy and busting with different flavors. The taste of Damien. He fiddles with his hands while a smile forms on his face. I take a sip of my cold water and when I finish, I place the glass back on the table. Let me see your hand. Damien reaches out to take mine. His hand holding mine is soft and cold. Damien gazes at my hand for a while. At times, he runs the tips of his fingers over the lines, gently caressing my hand. Are we together? L legitimately, like, th th this does not seem like friendly behavior unless he wants to get real close and personal with me. I... I don't think I mind it, but I might regret this later. What are you doing? People say reading palms can reveal future events. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I completely misread the situation! Oh, no! <laughs> Damien lifts his eyes and gazes at me with a smile. He holds onto my hand while turning his attention back to my hand. Lines of the palm indicates moments in your life and what will happen. Damien pauses, his eyes shimmer, serene. Well, what does destiny hold for me? Honestly, I don't know how to read palms. I laughed, and so did he. So it's not even true what you said? Ah, uh, it definitely is. It's just that uh, I don't know how to do it. I don't know what I'm supposed to see. He releases my hand and leans back. So I did read the situation right. You just wanted to hold my hand. A classmate of mine was reading her friend. Oh, that's him. A classmate of mine was reading her friend's poem. And she was explaining all this. It piqued my curiosity, so I listened. I thought I could do it because it looked so easy. He pressed his lips together, but the corners lifted. Also, look at the window behind you. I can predict it'll get dark soon. Okay, Sherlock! He burst into a hearty laugh. I suppose after breakfast you'll be heading home, right? Your father must be excited and happy that you're back. I'll accompany you if you're okay with that. Damien began searching his wallet to take out some bills and place them on the table. Yeah, I'll treat you to dinner. Enjoy the time with you. We finish eating. Damien stood up from his seat and helped me get up from mine. He extended his arm in a gentlemanly manner for me to take. I moved my hand towards him, passing it under his arm. We start walking out of the restaurant. I stop when I see my old house. My home. I always felt lonely being at home. My father was always traveling, signing autographs for people. Being forced to read all day from morning till night was exhausting. Even though I hated it, I couldn't hate books. I know how my father will react when he finds out I failed. You're incapable. You're useless. You'll never be like me. Your mother will be disappointed. You'll probably say all those things. I glance at Damien. He's putting a small notebook into his bag. I'll have to go. Thank you for accompanying me so far. No problem. I'm happy to see you again. I'll be at my place if you have time and you're not too tired from the trip. Cherry will be happy to see you again. I approach and hug him as a farewell. Despite the time, I missed him so much. His body emits the scent of orange juice. Why does he smell citrusy? For some reason, he always smells like what he drinks. I pull away to give him a friendly smile. He leans in a bit and gives me a kiss on the forehead before walking away. I enter the house and turn on the living room light. I take a deep breath to calm my nerves a bit. Dad, I'm home, I shout, hoping for a response from my father. No response. Maybe he's still asleep, so it would be strange. Dad always got up really early. I need to go into my father's bedroom. Ah, uh, what? Wait, what? What? I, I, there's so many things I can interact with. Uh, these are paintings of my mother and me. Uh, what about these paintings on the right? These are paintings of my mother and me. Well, it's this door in the back corner. I can't go to my room. Uh, the right corner? My father in his- My father isn't in his bedroom. I notice a small note stuck to the calendar on his desk. Book signing. To wear for two- TWO MONTHS?! HOLY FRICK! I let out a sigh. 
As expected, work is always more important than me. I should unpack my bags in my room. I can still smell my mother's perfume in the room. My mother always smelled like my favorite flower. Her perfume was off. What? what the, wait, there, there's a hidden one in the bottom right. Uh, what's that? Whoa! <laughs> oh, I think I might actually like this game. I let out a sigh. I try to open the window, and it opens completely. My father must have forgotten to lock my windows. I just hope he didn't take the key with him. Yeah, I should look for the keys one after time. I start taking out my clothes and organizing them in the closet. I wouldn't call that organizing. <laughs> like that's like that's barely like that's even more of a mess than when you got in. What what the heck? I only fold two pieces of clothing. The rest I start putting in a closet without organizing. My father isn't here to nag me about perfection. I finish arranging my clothes and belongings in my room. It's still early and I have time to do more things. What should I do next? Uh, yeah, he will greet the neighbors. I will say hello to the neighbors. It'd be cool to say hi to my neighbors. The Roosevelt's were always close to my parents. I still remember they had two kids. One older and the other was my age. I never really hung out with their kids. I step out and head to the house next door. I've forgotten how big the Roosevelt's house was compared to my dad's. Never knew what they did for a living, but they had man money. I knock on the door and see a shadow moving inside. I wait for a bit. Maybe the Roosevelt's are busy. No one answers, so I knock a little harder. I wait a bit longer, but no one's coming. Like, I can just imagine, like, how, like, the person inside feels. Like, there's a stranger at the door just, like, bashing the door and just like, Hello! I'd like to greet you! Good morning! Or evening! I don't even know what time of day it is. Oh, man. I get close to knock again when the door opens. Well, hello there, friend! <laughs> Ciao, Bellasim. I think you might be blind because you're knocking on the door. We have a doorbell to prevent people from knocking and dirty the door. Are you telling me my grubs are too dirty for your pristine door? Well, I have one thing coming for you. You want me to ring the bell? Hell's my I ring your bell. And that doesn't make any goddamn sense. It was cute though. But don't worry. I don't mind that you knocked on the door. So, need something? Yeah, I was looking for the Roosevelt's. Sorry, they ain't here right now. Name's Magnus. Who are you, Bellissima? I'm lying. You can come in and wait with me. It's been a minute since we've had a guest as Bellissima as you- What does Bellissima mean? Apparently it means very beautiful. The more you know. Um, uh, oh. Oh. I can flirt back, I can show discomfort, I can change the topic, I'm a flirt back. I'm going to, I'm going to flirt with everyone in this town. Oh god, I'm, I'm still kind of upset that we didn't have a chance to flirt with anyone um, back at the Mexican restaurant. Like, I'm just saying, I love to hang out with someone as handsome as you. I say in a playful tone as I approach him. The blonde guy looks up and sees me, his smile grows even wider. He runs his head through his jaws as if he's thinking. And I don't have time right now. Maybe another day? What a pity. What are you going to do today, then? I need to find a part-time job. I see. Then you must be very busy. Perhaps you'll need relax after work. If you ever need someone to... Magnus gets close to me, grabbing me by the hip and pressing me against him. I can feel his... Why? <laughs> Why already? Like, my dude, we are out in public. Like, holy frick. This is a family-friendly neighborhood. What are you doing? <laughs> His smile grows even wider when he notices that I felt it. When I felt him rubbing against me. Sure. Thanks a lot for the invitation. It's a shame I don't have the time right now. God, is this, is this the consequences of my action? God, it is, but another day we can spend more time together. Let me guess. This guy is hinting at another vision novel that the creators make it. Am I right? 
Am I right? Like, like, don't, like, do not tell me that I'm right, because I swear to God, this has happened at least once already. His hands start to caress my hips. Bay lets go and steps away for a brief moment. See you soon. Good luck with your job search. <clears throat> I smile and start to walk away. I walk back to the streets, feeling his gaze on me from behind. I can see several small stores. Some of them are too old. I glance to the side and steer my steps towards a bookstore that catches my attention. This bookstore looks new. I haven't seen it here before. I look at a poster on the window. Handmade flower books. What if moths ruin the books? If insects start eating books, it would be a sin. I can not leave my book unfinished. It would be interesting to have a different, aesthetically pleasing look. Maybe I should buy a book later. Just to see if they're really as good or bad as I think. There's nothing wrong with trying new things. Yeah, after the bookstore, there's a place of a sign that says they're hiring. It's a good job option, not too far from my dad's house. I still have time. I can go in to see what the job's about. It looks like a liquor store. You need something. A guy three times taller than me walks towards me, looking me up and down. I can't help but feel intimidated, this towering and muscular body, but I managed to respond without uh, showing myself as inferior. I saw the sound inside the store, once I asked about a job. We need a cashier. Uh, not just any cashier, one who can do quick maths and doesn't lose money. Have you worked for money before? Honestly, no, but I can try. We need a short mind, not attempts. I'll ask you some questions, I need you to answer as quickly and correctly as possible. If you answer these maths problem correctly, you can have the job. Wait, what? That's all I need? What's the result of 20 times 4? That's 80. What the heck? What's the result of 52 times 6? 52 times 6. Okay, let's see. 12. Yeah, it's 312. What's the result of 84 times 10? Uh, 84 times 10? Uh, 840. I'm impressed. Truly. These are just maths questions, my dude. I don't always come across someone as smart and beautiful like... Is everyone in this town down bad? My name's Valentin. I'm the bartender. Nice to meet you. You have to be here every afternoon. It's five hours. Excuse me, do you sell? What beautiful hat? What the- <laughs> uh, Ma'am! Ma'am! You, I, I, you, you just got here! What the frick? Beautiful eyes? Is she talking to me? The girl doesn't take her gaze off of me. I smile, try to be friendly, but it's still very awkward. When I smile at her, she looks away, play with her hands nervously. Valentin coughs, look at a customer with seriousness. It's hard to tell if he's angry or always in a bad mood. Also, like, why is there a bartender at liquor stores? Is that a thing? I thought typically there's just a cashier. Uh, how can we assist you? I want to know if you have a 1998 Raymore wine. Uh, Valentin hands her a bottle of wine and she takes it. Thank you very much. I love this place more and more each time. This wine is one of the best. It's a shame I have to drink it all by myself. My name's Evangeline, or Evan. You can call me whatever you like. Uh, I, I, like, I, I feel like Evangeline would have probably gone by Angeline. Would you do me the honor of sharing one or two glasses of this wine? The girl asks, look at me with a flirtatious smile. I hesitate to respond. It would be rude to decline, but I can't accept. Before I can answer, Valentin takes the initiative and speaks to Evangeline. Excuse me, if you don't want to buy anything else, you can leave. The girl walks away, still smiling. I feel like it was unnecessary for Valentin to be rude, but it's inappropriate nonetheless. Yeah, I'll tell my find a job somewhere else. We usually have customers like that, trying to flirt with the employees. Oh! Oh! Yeah, I, I, I guess I understand his, um, I, I guess I understand his hostility now. But we must remain professional. Just because you work at a liquor store bar doesn't give them the right to disrespect you. This is a bar too? If any drunk and disrespectful customer ever lays a hand on you, don't hesitate to tell me. Yeah, I stay silent, nod my head, and he just watches me. He doesn't say anything, probably regretting hiring me already. He lets out a sigh and speaks again. So, you can start working tomorrow. It's getting dark. Do you want me to give you a ride home? I'm good. Thanks, Valentin. Alright, take care. 
and leave the place. Take care of taking too long. It's already night. I want to get home and sleep. I've forgotten how dark these streets are at night. I'm grateful for always wearing this purple sweater. It keeps me warm. In the night, it can get too cold. My mother knitted this sweater. It's one of my favorites. What was that? I swear, I heard footsteps. I should have accepted Valentin's offer to give me a ride home. I start walking faster. I should hurry. Wait a minute! Home sweet home. It's time to get to my room. Uh, is there anything else I can interact with? These books are too old, covered in too much dust. My father only keeps them here as decoration to appear as someone who loves reading. But my father has never read a book in his life. He only writes. It's hypocritical of him, but it is his life. It's time to go to my room. What's here? He set a keys to the house windows. I'm glad I found them. It will be dangerous to sleep without fully securing the house. It's time to go to my room. Nope, I'm going to interact with everything. It's a bit sad to see all the paintings of my mother. It's good to have memories of her. I won't forget what she looked like. It's time to go to my room. Uh, what about, uh, what's that? Top right. Uh, it's a bit sad to see all these paintings of my mother. It's good to have memories of her. I don't forget what she looks like. It's time to go to my room. Uh, more paintings of his mother. More paintings of his mother. Uh, we don't, there's more paintings of their mother. And yeah, yeah, boink. What the frick? I should take a breath before going to sleep. Today was definitely exhausting. I'm exhausted. I can't wait to lie down in bed. What is this? A letter? I don't remember seeing a letter on my bed this morning. Maybe I did. I approached to pick up the letter and open it. I never imagined myself in this position. My, na my naivety led me to believe that this world would be forever. And yet, I still wish it to be so. How wrong and mistake I was every time I thought my life had no purpose. When I cried and suffered because I felt alone, my heart no longer beats because it wants to live. It beats because I must live for you. I can't help but think that, paradoxically, no one will love me like you do. My soul now recognizes you as the one who ignited it, gave it color and life. I will write to you again. See you soon. Maybe my f Why would your dad write this for you? We've already established he wouldn't do this! The paper material is made from flowers. The pages are a bit stiff and rough. Perhaps it's a page torn from a book from a bookstore that makes flower books. I wonder why he would tear a page and just leave it here. I put the sheet back into the envelope of the letter I placed on the nightstand next to my bed. It's nice to be back in this quiet town. Tomorrow will be another day. End of day one. So I wanted to check out some other things, like maybe hang out with Damien, but I also want to know like what some of these doors are, so... It's the library. I remember that after mom died, my father kept me locked in here, forcing me to read. I never finished reading all these books. I need to go to my father's bedroom. What about this door to the right? It's the kitchen. That hasn't been used in years. Mom was the only one who cooked. Dad never wanted me to cook and never let me do it either, because it was mom's domain. I need to go to my father's bedroom. Well, we're skipping ahead. Let's visit Damien. I take my cell phone out of my pocket to send a message to Damien. Can I still come to your house? Why? Are you coming, Snow Light? <laughs> Wait, who, who made an emote of you? Yeah, I don't really have anything to do and I want to hang out with you. Of course you can come. I put my phone in my pocket and start walking outside the house. I think I still remember where Damien's house is. I can see several small stores. Some of them are too old. I glance to the side and steer my steps towards a bookstore to catch my attention. This bookstore looks new. I haven't seen it here before. I look at the posters on the window. Handmade flower books. What if moths ruined the books? I think we've seen all this. Let's skip. Uh, oh. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, 20 times 4, 8. Uh, this is 312. This is 840. Yet, yet, I don't care. I leave the place. I think I took too long. It's already nighttime. Damien must be worried. I've forgotten how dark these streets are at night. I'm grateful for always wearing this purple sweater. It keeps me warm. Haven't we already seen this? In the night, it can get too cold. My mother knitted this sweater. It's one of my favorites. What was that? I swear I heard footsteps. I should have accepted Valentin's offer to take me to Damien's house. I saw walking faster. I should hurry. Hi, Keith!
I observed the apartment building from a distance and let out a sigh of relief. I climbed the stairs until I reached Damien's door. Tapping on the door, Sherry opens it. Tell you're so small! Lion, you really came! I miss you so much! The little girl says, unable to contain her excitement. My brother cleaned the whole house and bought desserts for us to watch a movie in his room. I want us to have a sleepover, the three of us together. It's a perfect night. Will you stay overnight, right? I remained silent, thinking, feeling the pressure in the question. One of her qualities is being too stubborn until she gets what she wants. I watched Damien coming out of his bathroom. Aren't you forcing Lion to stay overnight, Cherry? No, I wouldn't! <laughs> but will you stay? <sighs> Fine, yes. I've never stayed overnight with Damien and his little sister before. But there's no point in going home to sleep alone. Plus, I'm sure I'll have fun tonight with them. Yeah, I'll stay. Cherry gets excited and jumps towards me, hugging me. Damien also approaches and hugs me. Well, let's get to my room and watch a movie. I'll get the desserts and join you in a moment. I can smell the scent of incense in this room. It's very pleasant. Damien enters after us, carrying muffins in his hands. What movie are we going to watch? I was planning on watching Millie the Butterfly. It's a cartoon, so Cherry can enjoy it. I hope that's okay. Uh, let's see. No problem, it's fine for Cherry to enjoy a cartoon. It's sweet how close Damien is to his sister. Not a problem at all. Let's watch it. I lie down in the bed. Damien lies on my right, and Cherry lies on his side. Cherry takes the remote and starts a movie. Damien hands each of us a muffin. They're a bit cold, but they smell delicious. I take two bites, and the taste of strawberry and cream fills my mouth. I enjoy the delicious dessert while watching the movie. It's about a little spider that can that wanted to fly. She sewed wings from leaves, but could never really fly. One day, a butterfly fell to the ground because the wings were broken, and she met the spider. The spider helped the butterfly by sewing her wings back together so she could heal. The butterfly likes the kindness of the spider. Then the butterfly helped the spider enjoy flying together. Both insects fall in love, but the other insects disapprove of their relationship. Despite that, the butterfly and the spider start a family. I turn to Damien, who taps my shoulder. He points to the space beside him, and I can see the sweet cherry sleeping, cuddled against his arm. I smile at Damien, and he smiles back at me. He turns off the TV, leaving only the light from the table lamp. Damien? I murmur, almost in a whisper, so as not to wake Cherry. Yes, Snowlight? Isn't it too cold? Yeah, the heater's broken. I haven't had the money to fix it. Damien sits down and starts taking off his sweater. Here, the sweater is warmer. We're into balance the temperature. I haven't bought sheets because I don't have the money. Sorry for not giving you any to cover yourself. I give him a reassuring smile as I put on Damien's sweater. I can still feel the warmth of his sweater. Damien is usually a person with cold body temperature all the time. At first, it was strange to see him bundled up all the time, even on sunny days. Damien. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but just like, just the image of white and like on the right. No eyes, no nose, like, like barely an ear, holy frick. I murmur again and Damien looks at me with a smile. Why haven't you had a partner since your last breakup? Haven't you fallen in love again? Damien lets out a sigh, staying silent for a while before responding. Yeah, I am in love. I'm constantly in love with life. <laughs> what the hell is this pseudo-philosophical stuff? After breaking up my ex, I realized that I should look for someone who truly loves me. We can all love everyone. Loving implies giving unconditional love. We love because we can love. Loving for real implies giving love for interest. We love because we decide to desp despite the flaws. The problem with true love is not being reciprocated. There is always a higher chance that the other person doesn't truly love you. If that happens, you will suffer constantly. Am I talking too much? No, not at all. Damien stays silent again. He's probably thinking. I almost forgot to give you something. In the morning, when we were at the apartment, I did a quick sketch. You were lost in your thoughts while looking around, and I liked the scenery. When you're not there... The restaurant is less picturesque, 
without you attracting the light. The restaurant is nice, but it's not, it's just not as enjoyable when you're not there with me. I do with my favorite colors. You know, I like to draw with colors in crayons. Whenever I draw you, I stick the drawing on my wall to keep the memory when we're together. But this time, I like to give it to you. Thank you. It's, it's beautiful. Damien gives me a small smile and we stay silent for a while longer. Well, it's too late. Let's get back to sleep. Damien turns off the lamp, leaving the room almost completely dark. Uh, I... Uh, this is really weird, but I'm going to kiss my friend. I am going to kiss my friend. Like, y'all can't stop me. I'm kissing my goddamn friend. I move closer to him and give him a small kiss on the cheek. <laughs> I can feel Damien start a little bit. He probably wasn't expecting it. He gets closer to me and hugs me. My face ends up on his neck. He lets out a small sigh. I can hear his heartbeats. They're slow and calm. I feel my body start to fall asleep. What was that? I'm sure I heard someone knocking on the door. Damien and Sherry are still asleep. I should go see why it is. What is this? A letter. Why would someone leave a letter in the middle of the night? I approach to pick up the letter and open it. And it's the same letter as before. Behind the envelope, a name is written. I glance out the window. I don't see anyone. It's very dark inside. That's strange, but it's not that important. I return to the room. Damien and Sherry haven't noticed that I got up. I lie down with them again to continue sleeping. It's comfy. Finally fall asleep completely. End of day one. Anyway, that was Flower Letters. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this for yourself, link to your game will be in the description below. I'd have to say that this is actually so much better than mine. Uh, I feel like the writing has improved immensely, as well as like some of the art and animation. And I did like their use of sound effects every now and then. And also the creepy imagery of both the glitches and also Keith like sneaking around the corner. I'm guessing it's Keith. Okay, that's just a theory. Hey, a game theory. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.